let's implement a half adder circuit. So let's build a sub circuit. We'll call it half adder. And a half adder uh, takes two inputs. So we'll create those as pins. And those two inputs are called A and B. And I'm going to use the convention, the labels that uh, the book used, just to kind of keep things consistent. And let's go ahead and create the outputs as well, because I think it makes it more understandable if we can kind of see what's going in and what's going out. So there's two outputs. Uh, the first output is the sum, which is the sum of these two. And they are outputs. And let's flip that. Okay, and then uh, it's also, that is an output. Okay, great. So when, as a half adder, when either this one or this one is high, then sum ought to be high. So that sounds like an exclusive OR to me. So here's our exclusive OR. So whenever this one or this one is high, then yeah, let's can move these closer. Something like that, maybe. Then some should be high. Okay. Now for the carry, if both of these are high, then the carry should be high but only if both of them. So if and only if both are high, then that should be high. And that is implemented with an AND gate. Right, so we can test the circuit now and see that it works. So that's high and that's high. The carry is now high, but if either one of these are high, then sum is high. So we can take that off, take that on, sum, carry. Okay, so that's very simple. That's the, that is the, the sum of our half adder. Now, by itself, this, this can be used in other projects by simply importing. If you go to project load library, and, and of course we're going to save this, but once we save this, you can load this circuit into any other circuit as a sub circuit and be able to reuse it. And that's what I, that's the objective that I'm going to go through with all of these little mini tutorials is each one of the uh, circuit elements in the book. I want to do, sort of a standalone version of it, but I also want to make it so that we can synthesize this circuit on an FPGA because, well, frankly, I just like the tangibility of this work and I like to actually see, you know, for this simple example, it's trivial. Of course, as these circuits get more complicated, it gets to be more interesting. And so having a technique to do that, I think is important. So what I want to do is I want to take the main file that's already here. I'm going to rename it. And the reason that I want to rename it is because when you import these libraries or these, mm, these uh, projects into other projects, if you have overlapping circuit names, the import uh, process doesn't, doesn't like it. It barfs. So if you have main all over the place, uh, you will not be able to import one library that's got a main in it into another project that has a that has a main in it. So I'm gonna you know rename all of the mains to 
basically be the user interface for the uh, piece of hardware that we are ultimately going to implement or, or at least be able to implement if we want to onto a, an FPGA. So my half adder then, and it's going to look essentially like, of course, the half adder with just the pins on it. So obviously it's going to have, uh, uh, let's see, it's going to have a button. Uh, let's make it a dip switch because buttons kind of, uh, we, we don't want it momentary. We want to be able to just switch these things off and on now. So there's an A and a B. So that means there's two going to be two switches. We're going to call this a B and we're going to flip it. And then of course there's going to be two outputs. Let's make them LEDs. And this is going to be the sum. And this one will be the carry. And then we need our half adder. And I don't like that big representation. So I always try change it to the classic. It's just more compact. It doesn't use the labels, although you can hover over the connection points and you can get the names, so that seems to work fine. And we'll wire this up and wire this up. Now, this should just work. So if I click here, there, there's the sum, and then both on the carry flips. So that is the implementation of our half adder. Now, to make it importable, we, gotta, we need to save it. And so I'm going to save these in different folders. And the name that you save it as, it's a bit annoying. Like you can't have a component named as the same as the project. So I often add lib to the end of my project so that we can name these uh, subcircuits as what they are. Uh, and then the project itself, just call it lib so that you can import the lib and then, you know, your target project where you want the library to appear, you'll see these subcircuits under the library called half adder lib, if that makes sense. So thanks for watching.